All righty. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. DDG94 here, back with another reaction video. Today, we fit a react to wrestlers getting angry backstage. This, sh this should be interesting. Wrestlers getting angry backstage. Mm. This should be interesting because... WWE has been allowing the cameras to go backstage recently, so this should be fun. Let's check this one out. Fans often see wrestlers get angry in the ring, but rarely do you get to see the drama that goes on backstage. Yeah, I know. I don't know what the f to say. I didn't say nothing to the anything. goddamn kid. I understand that. Well, no, you don't because I'm making a video. RP Ultimate yeah. Warrior. In this video, you'll see some rare backstage arguments caught on camera, a few of which even led to real fights. Hey, you piece of Oh, damn. Oh, damn. March 30th, 2003 was the day Brock Lesnar nearly died. In his first WrestleMania match, the Beast took on the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. The two phenomenal athletes had one of the most physical WrestleMania matches of all time, but it nearly ended in tragedy. Earlier Goated match. Brock should have never pulled that uh, shooting star press out. He never should have did that shooting star, though. In the day, people backstage told Brock Lesnar that he should perform a shooting star press. Brock had performed this move earlier in his career, but stopped due to how dangerous it was. Lesnar did not want to do the shooting star press, but got talked into it. After wrestling with Kurt Angle for 20 minutes, Lesnar got onto the top rope to perform the high-risk move. Okay. It did not pay off, and nearly cost Brock his life as he landed on his head and neck. Somehow, Lesnar was able to get back up and finish the match. Yeah, this is a golden match. Worse, Still a golden match. He snapped. I was getting warm, I was getting sick, and I, all these people surrounded me, and I was just going nuts, you know, people were grabbing me and wanted me down the stretcher, and wanted me in the ambulance, and I wasn't having any of that. WWE wrestlers are constantly getting asked to do interviews. Not only that, but in some cases, the interviewer is trying to manipulate the wrestler into saying something they don't want to. Former WWE star Dean Ambrose, aka John Moxley, saw exactly what this camera crew was trying to do and called them out. You asked me the same question like 15 times, and I'm not gonna manufacture some answer for you. Like, go find somebody else and give them a script. Stop trying to like lead me into saying the things you want me to say. This is not the only time Ambrose got legitimately upset backstage. In late 2017, Dean Ambrose suffered a triceps injury and was out of action for nine months. Finally, in August 2018, Ambrose was getting ready to make his return. A WB camera crew was filming the lunatic fringe when he got a phone call informing him plans had changed. No way. You're kidding me. I am feeling good. I happen to be feeling fantastic. Thank you for asking. No, yeah, I'm gonna be there. I'm not, cause I'm not even out there. Except for, you know, the last eight months, like where I nearly died. But thanks for calling. No, now, now you call. I'm gonna get on a plane and go all the way back to the East Coast. About this much notice. I've been back in the game for like 30 seconds and I'm already getting pissed off. It was uncommon to have cameras backstage at WWE shows. And that's like, why he left. This is because wrestlers really broke character back then to keep fans believing it was all real. However, backstage was a safe place for wrestlers to be themselves. At one event though, someone was able to get backstage with a camera and secretly filmed Andre the Giant and some other wrestlers. Once they saw the intruder, Andre made it clear he was not welcomed. Hey, the f is on there. So far, these incidents haven't led to anyone getting into a fight, but this next one did. CM Punk's arrival in All Elite Wrestling in 2021 was a huge moment for the company. However, Punk's tenure in AEW was filled with controversy. This was first brought to light in 2022 when CM Punk went on a tirade during a media scrum after AEW's All Out pay-per-view. And the fact that I have to sit up here because we have irresponsible people who call themselves EVPs and couldn't manage a target and they spread Damn. lies and bullshit. These verbal attacks would soon become physical. After CM Punk left the media scrum, he was confronted by those EVPs he had just insulted. The confrontation soon turned physical, with CM Punk getting into a real fight with Kenny Omega and Matt and Nick Jackson. The incident was so bad that CM Punk ended up signing a lifetime NDA, preventing him from ever talking about what happened at All Out. While no footage of that backstage fight exists, the fight that happened after that does. Yes, CM Punk got into two backstage fights within two years in AEW. After the incident at All Out, 
out, Punk was sent home. Nine months later, the best in the world would return, but it wouldn't last long. During his second run in AEW, Punk said he was asked to help with a dispute backstage. Fellow wrestler Jack Perry was adamant about doing a stunt where you'd go through a real car windshield. Multiple backstage personnel had told Perry no, but he still wanted to perform the stunt. That's when CM Punk was asked to step in and use his authority as a veteran wrestler to tell Jack Perry no. According to CM Punk, Perry was calm and understanding when Punk explained why he would not be slammed through a real car windshield. That seemed to be the end of it. However, not long after, the argument was opened again, and this time, it ended much worse. During AEW's All In pay-per-view, Jack Perry was competing in a match when he said this to the camera. Page of Rob Van Dam. Come here. Jack you know Perry this is right launching here? and then crushing. Real the, glass. Crushing the abdomen. Don't cry me a river. Obviously, this was a direct shot taken at CM Punk. This upset Punk, and he confronted Jack Perry after the match. The you gotta be really stupid. I understand, dog. I understand. In the moment, you really want to get your character over. You know what I'm saying? And you want to do something to get the crowd going crazy. I get it. As a wrestler, I get it. But you're human, though. You're not this superhero that you think you are. You have to. People have to separate the character from who they really are. Why would you want to put yourself through actual glass? Do you know how dangerous that is? How dumb can you be? Like, I'm not even a CM Punk guy. I don't, I don't like CM Punk, but he was justified in this point because, dude, why would you put yourself through that? The footage doesn't have any audio, but after a brief conversation, CM Punk shoved Jack Perry and put him in a headlock. People nearby were quick to break up the altercation, but nonetheless, the incident got a lot of attention. The backstage fight ultimately led to CM Punk leaving AEW and eventually rejoining WWE. Speaking of WWE, a similar incident happened decades before CM Punk's backstage fight and actually resulted in someone getting hurt. In 1997, the WWE Champion Bret Hart was leaving WWE to work for their competitor, WCW. His last match for the company was at the Survivor Series pay-per-view in Montreal, Quebec. Hart's contract gave him reasonable creative control and he decided not to lose the championship. The owner of WWE, Vince McMahon, wanted Hart to lose the title but legally couldn't say no. So he did something different. During Bret Hart's final WWE match, McMahon had the bell run and awarded the victory to Bret's opponent, Shawn Michaels. This was all planned behind Bret's back and the Hitman was just as shocked as the fans. Since this happened on live TV, most people have seen this infamous moment, but few have seen what happened backstage. Sean, you were in on that? <sighs> fucking idea. I got no place. God is my fucking witness. My hands are clean of this one, I swear to God. Okay, he's yelling me out there. I gave him a belt when I came back here. I will not have any part of it. After the cameras left, Bret Hart would have a private meeting with Vince McMahon. Bret then shared what happened immediately after. What happened? Somehow Vince ran into my hand, but I drilled him as hard as I could. Stopped him right out. You knocked out Vince McMahon with a punch? And I told him to get out. Don't look at the camera, trying to look for him. <laughs> This isn't the first time a wrestler has been mad at Vince McMahon. Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns Universal Championship match at WrestleMania 34 is considered to be one of the worst main events in WWE history. The crowd was not into it, with fans chanting, this is awful, during the bout. Oh my well, it's because you already did this. It didn't help either that the match went through some last minute changes. In the end, Brock Lesnar beat Roman and retained the Universal title. Despite the victory, the Beast was mad, presumably because of how horrible his match was. After the match was over, Brock went backstage and did this. If this were anybody else, they probably would have been fired for showing this level of disrespect to Vince McMahon, but this is Brock Lesnar. In fact, it was reported that McMahon and Lesnar later talked things over and made amends. After wrestling for 30 years... And again, think about it, it's Brock fucking Lesnar. You gonna walk up to Brock Lesnar and say, hey asshole, why'd you throw the title at me? No. <laughs> no. I think even Vince as... Ballsy, as ballsy as Vince is, I'm pretty sure he's not walking up to Brock Lesnar and talking shit to Brock Lesnar because he knows what's going to happen. <laughs> you got to you gotta pick your fights wisely, especially at Vince's age. Yeah, you got to pick your fights wisely. Here, 
years, Terry Funk was hanging up his boots and retiring. The hardcore icon was going to have one last match before calling it quits and hope that his friend and fellow wrestler, Dennis Stamp, would be there. However, Stamp wasn't booked and refused to attend. Terry Funk then went to his friend and asked him to come to his retirement match, leading to an argument. How's everything going? <laughs> I'm not going to be here, but... Why aren't you? Because I'm not booked. You're not going to be here. Why aren't you going to be here? Please be here. I'm not going to be here, Terry, because I'm not booked. That's a, that's care. that's an old rule. You. That's an but old rule I've to. had for a long time. Because I'm not involved. I want you to come, please. Well, I'm asking I, you to please come. All right. I've are, I, have, I already have other. Come. I already have other arrangements, and and and, and don't take come. it personally because but I used to be in the dressing room and I used to see the old guys. And that's where I am now. I used to see the old guys that came in the dressing room that come around and they looked like old dogs just hoping somebody would recognize them. Here's Spot. Why don't you come and see us? I really have to be involved and I'm not. I want you to be there. You know, and I did, I, and I I did ask you, you in you April if I could referee some matches on the card. Which You're would have been. You're refereeing tonight, Tim. Which would, would have been. You're would, tonight. But I'm not on the card. I'm not booked. You want to referee me and Brett? I mean, you, you can't take that personally, though. R.P. to Terry Funk, by the way. R.P. to Terry Funk. But can't take that personally, my brother. If he if he can't make it, he can't make it. He don't want to be back there. He don't want to be back there. That's that's. Hey, that's you got it. You got to uh, just gonna have to accept that. I understand it's gonna be your last match, and you want your best buddy to be there. But if he can't make it, he can't make it, man. Just go out there and do your best. You go out there and do it for the fans. No, nah, no, nah, Julio. No, nah, not at all. <laughs> I've I've grown my my I've grown my fan base at this point. So and I'm getting new people coming to the stream all every week, so uh, I ain't saying that I the stream would be better without. I'm not saying that at all. But hey, man, we we growing over here, so that's that's the good thing. As long as we growing over here, I got my people that's gonna come up in here and do their thing. So it it, it don't really it wouldn't really bother me as much. I, I would understand if you if you left or if you if you just couldn't show up. I would I would understand. But nah. You got to You just you post. It's your last match. Just go out there and do it for the fans, and uh, just go out on your own. Uh, and just go out with a bang. That's what I would. That's what I would do. Right, Brett. Me and Brett. I, I I already have I already have I other arrangements made. Terry, I want you to referee me and Brett. I'm just I guess, I okay, so so what happened? I I'm guess you did miles I guess it was just doing. so far down. I, I guess you just didn't didn't hear me or something when I asked you before. I don't. Or didn't Dennis, think about I it. I didn't even know about it. it. But I want you to. I want you to. I appreciate that. Okay, I want you to. Okay. Will you please do it? Appreciate it. It's my that. last match. It's my last match. Call me if you can, because I would love it. Okay. I'm hope to have you there. I appreciate that, Terry. I want you to be there. I appreciate that. Dennis Stamp did end up attending the show and was right by his friend's side. In fact, Stamp was the referee for Terry Funk's match that night against Bret Hart. Santino Marella was one of the funniest WWE wrestlers of all time, but just like everyone, he can get ticked off too. In 2005, Santino was training at WWE's development system, OVW. During a show, Santino was playing a fan in the crowd. He was supposed to act afraid of the boogeyman, but instead, he laughed. The man in charge, Jim Cornette, became enraged and slapped Marella afterward. Cornette ended up getting fired and Santino continued his WWE career. Over a decade later, while at a convention, Morella and Cornette bumped into each other, and it went as well as you would expect. Get the f away from me. I'll try to walk away from you. Oh, damn. Hey, look at this guy. He's trying to spare a fight with me, and I'm trying to walk away from you. And I don't have nothing else to say to you, so get the f out of my way. And you're the first one to say to Oh, no, that's personal. That's per I To be fair, you didn't have to slap the guy. Cause he fucked up. If he fucked up, you just yell at him, berate him. But you ain't gotta put your hands on him. So I don't blame Santino for for having that vendetta against Jim Cornette. Even though Jim Cornette is, I ain't gonna lie, Jim Cornette is a legend. I do be watching his uh his uh YouTube channel every now and again. That that should be funny sometimes. Going over the matches, <laughs> I think it be going in. <laughs> and that nigga be going in on AEW. <laughs> Shit me up there. Hey, shout out to Jim Cornette, man. 
but that was definitely wrong. I, I can't blame Santino. If I'm Santino, I, I, I would, I would. I, I would press up on you too about that slap. That shit ain't that shit ain't cool. Don't put your hands on me. You don't know me, cuz. Now we saw how CM Punk manhandled Jack Perry, but how well would he have done in a real fight? To find out, watch the video on screen. Oh wow. Well. But well, anyway, so that's just gonna about do it for this one, man. Let's just go about do it for this one. I will see you all in the next video. Most definitely, man. Wrestlers backstage, they do got some beef. I'm surprised they didn't bring up the uh, Chris Jericho one. The Chris Jericho and Brock Lesnar one. When Chris Jericho got mad at Brock Lesnar because Chris Jericho actually thought that Brock Lesnar beat the shit out of Randy Orton. <laughs> Oh, uh, that was that was a that was an interesting story. I, I would love to have seen some footage of that. I would have loved to see some footage of that. Chris Jericho and Brock Lesnar fighting backstage. Oh, that would have been funny. But uh, anyway, so I just go about do for this one. I will see you all in the next video. Till then, peace out.